Welcome to Data Demystified. I'm Jeff Gallick, and this is my series of tutorial videos on how to use SPSS to work with data. In this video, I'm going to show you how to conduct and interpret planned contrasts that follow up on a one-way ANOVA. As always, we'll be using the YouTube Viewing Habits survey that I created, and you can find both a link to the data file and a video tutorial below. Planned contrasts, or post hoc tests, can actually be very useful ways when using an ANOVA to actually make comparisons between specific groups or even pooling specific groups and making comparisons between those. If you haven't watched my ANOVA video or if you're not familiar with how to do an ANOVA, I really encourage you to watch that first and then come back to this video. I'll make sure to leave a link to it below. If you are familiar with ANOVA, I'm going to show you how to conduct these planned contrasts, and I'm going to do it with variables that have three levels, five levels, and six levels. That'll give us enough examples to really get a feel for how these contrasts work. There's two main ways to do the contrasts, and I'll show you both, though I'm going to strongly favor doing the second slightly more complicated version because it'll let us do contrasts for two- and three-way ANOVAs, which is something I'll cover in a future video. So a fairly typical way that people do contrasts when they're doing a one-way ANOVA is under this Analyze Compare Means One-Way ANOVA tool. There's an option right here for contrasts, and what it lets you do is specify whatever type of contrast coefficients you want. I find this very clunky to begin with because I don't get to type it all out nicely. And secondly, because it's not robust to anything other than a one-way ANOVA, I'd rather not teach somebody a tool that is very limited when I could teach them a tool that's more general. So again, if you watch my ANOVA video, I prefer a different tool, which is under Analyze, General Linear Model, Univariate. I'm going to start with a three-level variable, which is going to be my variable gender. Gender has the variable codings as male, female, and other, so somebody can select something if they don't feel comfortable reporting male or female. So we have three levels, one, two, three, and we might want to compare those in some specific ways. So let's first take a look at what that looks like in general, and then we'll do those plan contrasts. So I put gender in my fixed factor, and for this purpose, we'll just use our average opinion as our outcome variable, because that's what we've used in previous videos as well. There are many options that I could select, but I'm really only going to select the EM means option. I'm going to pop that over to give us estimated marginal means, and that'll just be useful for us to see things in a second. So I'll click OK, and I'll get our results. It doesn't really matter that there's no significant effect, because the point of this is to show you how to run those planned contrasts. So here are our estimated marginal means, and the thing that's really important is actually the order in which this is presented. When we create our contrast codes in just a moment, that order is going to be critical. So to create these contrast codes, we're actually going to have to use the syntax tools within SPSS. To get the code for this analysis, the easiest thing to do is just to go back and rerun that analysis. If we click this button right here, it'll rerun my most recent analyses. Here's the univariate analysis. And I'm going to hit paste. Paste is going to take the code that was used to generate this analysis and put it into our syntax window. So this is actually the syntax we need for this univariate ANOVA, but to make this a little more robust, we're going to change our command from uni ANOVA to GLM, or general linear model. The rest of the syntax actually is intact, and so we don't have to worry about it. And in particular, let's say we wanted to make the comparison between male versus female. This is actually somewhat of an inappropriate test to run when we have a variable with multiple values like we do with gender, which has one, two, and three, male, female, and other. A t-test between just those two variables will have a smaller sample size because it's excluding the other category. And when we're doing our planned contrast or our post hoc contrast, we're actually going to have a smaller error term because it's based on all the cases from ANOVA, which makes this a little bit more of an appropriate test. So how do we actually define these contrasts? Well, to do that, we have to add a new line of code, and the syntax for this is going to be that same backslash you see everywhere else, and the code is L matrix. An L matrix is going to let us create a contrast however we want it to. The first thing we actually can do is just name this contrast, which I find useful because the output doesn't by default tell us what we've done. And so to do that, we use single quotes, and I'm going to call this something like male versus female. So I'm going to compare the average response of males to the average response of females, ignoring the response of those who selected other. I then have to define the variable on which we're actually going to be doing this contrast, and that variable actually just happens to be gender, so I'll copy and paste that right here. I then define the actual contrast itself. So I'm going to show you what this contrast looks like, and then I'll explain why it works. The contrast is 1, negative 1, 0. The way this contrast works is that it takes the first variable, whatever that happens to be, in this case it's male, and compares it to negative 1, which is the second level of this variable, and it ignores the third one entirely, which is 0. One of the most important rules is that whatever your contrast happens to be has to sum to 0 in total. So 1 plus negative 1 is 0, plus 0 is 0, so this is a valid contrast. You can, of course, define this to be whatever you want it to be. You can make any comparison you like, as long as that sums up to 0. This isn't the only type of contrast, of course, that we can use. For instance, if I want to have another contrast, I can add one right below it, call it L matrix. And this time I'm going to say male versus female plus other. In other words, I'm going to pool 
the female and other responses and compare those against male responses. And again, I have to define what variable we're working with, which is gender. And the contrast for this one, I'll just show it to you and then you'll see what it looks like, is gonna be two, negative one, negative one. Well, why is that? Well, I need this to equal to zero, which this does, two plus negative one plus negative one is zero. And I also needed to pool these two levels of this variable equally, so that's gonna pool female and other, and then compare it against male, which is coded as number two. So even though this is gonna receive twice the weight, it actually is comparing it in balance to these other two variables pooled together. So let's see what the output looks like for this. So the first thing we see is we get our standard between subject tests, that's the same as we've seen before. And right here are our contrasts, and you can see our labels are right there, male versus female, male versus female and other. If we go down to our custom hypothesis tests, the thing that we really wanna focus on is right here. This is our test result for that contrast. This contrast in particular is that first one, which is male versus female, and as it happens, this contrast is statistically significant. In other words, when we compare males to females and ignore other, there is a significant difference between those two. And in fact, the difference is right here, negative 0.140. Our second contrast, by the way, which is males versus females and other, so pooling those two together, is not statistically significant. There, in fact, is no difference between those. And we see that right here. Here's our significance level well above 0.05. So these are our two contrasts that we ran for a three-level variable. Now what I'm gonna do is show you this for a five-level variable. There's a lot more complexity we can include, and I'll show you how we do that as well. So the five-level variable that I'm gonna look at is actually right here if we go back to our data editor, and I'm gonna look in particular at this variable called pol ID or political ID. It is coded as one Republican, two Democrat, three Independent, four Libertarian, and five others. So there's five levels here. And I might be interested to see if any of these differ, again, on this variable of average opinion. So I can actually just go right back to my syntax, so I'm going to do that here. So what I'll do is I'll actually just change everywhere that it says gender to poll ID. So poll ID, poll ID, poll ID, and the L matrices I'll actually just redo from scratch so we see what those look like. So this is what our standard GLM will be without any L matrices. If I want to add one, I just pick a space to add it, and I type L matrix and then we'll define whatever we want to test. So let's start simple and let's test Republicans versus Democrats on the same outcome variable. So I might just call it R versus D. Republicans and Democrats were coded as number one and number two in our data set. So the syntax for the L matrix is gonna be pretty straightforward. We first put in our variable that we're gonna be working with and then it's just gonna be one, negative one, but then we also need a string of zeros. Critically, the number of levels of our variable has to match the number of inputs we put into our contrast. That's going to tell me Republicans versus Democrats. Let's do another one. So we have L matrix. Let's this time do Republicans, Democrats versus Independents and Libertarians. So R plus D versus I plus L, just for my shorthand. Again, poll ID. And now the way we're going to define this is we're going to go like this. We're going to say 1, 1, negative 1, negative 1, 0. We have five values. It all adds up to zero if we sum that up, and it's gonna put equal weight on the first two, which is Republican Democrat, and equal weight on the third and fourth level of the variable, which is independent and libertarian. I'm gonna do one more here. So under L matrix, I wanna compare Republicans versus Democrats plus independents plus libertarians plus other. So I wanna compare Republicans versus everybody else. So I put in poll ID again, and the coding for this one actually is just gonna be four, negative one, negative one, negative one, negative one. I'm going to equally pool these four groups and compare it to Republicans. There's a large combination of different matrices that you could run depending on the specific combinations that you're interested in. So let's see what the output for this looks like. Again, it doesn't really matter that the overall and over here is not significant. What we're interested in is learning how to do these contrasts. So if we scroll down, we've got all of our contrasts defined right here. For our first contrast, comparing Republicans versus Democrats, there is no significant difference. We see that right here. For our second one, comparing Republicans and Democrats versus independents and libertarians, there's what we'll typically call a marginal difference, although practically speaking, we're just fishing here, so really we should be correcting for multiple comparisons, so that's not really a difference either. And then finally, if we compare Republicans to all the other groups combined, we again find no significant difference. But the point of all this is to say, no matter what combination you want, if we go back to our syntax, you can define that right here with your L matrices. Just make sure that this sums up to zero and weight it accordingly. 
This is actually the point in the video where I'm going to ask you to pause and I'm going to have you do a little bit of a challenge here, which is I want you to try and do this with a six level variable and the variable is going to be minute watched. So let me show you what that is. If we go up here, minute watched is our variable that says how many minutes did you watch YouTube in a typical day and it's coded on six different dimensions. So why don't you go ahead and run this analysis within an ANOVA and complete a challenging contrast. Try to compare the first three groups, one, two, and three, pulled together to the fourth and fifth group ignoring the sixth one. See if you could figure out what those contrasts are. This is a good point for you to pause and give it a try, and I'll show you what it looks like when you return. So hopefully you've gone ahead and done that, and I'll show you how this works as well. So again, my variable is going to be minute watched. I'm going to go back to my syntax. I'll get rid of my L matrices just to start things over. Anywhere where it says poll ID, I'm going to replace with minute watched. And now we'll run our L matrix. So our L matrix is going to be called 1, 2, 3, verse 4, 5, just kind of to keep things simple. Our variable is going to be minute watch, which I'll just paste because I had that from before. And our contrast in this case is going to be 1 third, 1 third, 1 third, negative 1 half, negative 1 half, 0. See what we've done here? We've taken the first three levels of this variable and pulled them together equally. And we've taken the next two levels and pulled them together equally, and we've ignored that last level. This is going to allow us to compare these three levels versus these two levels pooled. This is a really neat and efficient way for us to make these complex comparisons using ANOVA paired with these planned contrasts. Let's see what the output for this looks like, though. We see right here that the difference is statistically significant for our planned contrast. And in fact, we even see that the mean difference between those groups, the first three versus those next two pulled together, is a negative 0.64. That's our average difference between those groups. And that is a difference that is statistically significant. So again, these planned contrasts are very powerful tools for us to be able to make these complex comparisons. If you want to know more about these, especially using things like two-way and three-way ANOVAs, take a look at the links to the videos for those below. That's it for this video. I hope you found this useful, and if you have any questions, please comment below, and I'll be sure to reply as quickly as I can. Aside from these tutorials, I'm on a mission to equip everyone with the information they need to thrive in our data-rich world. If you'd like to learn not just the mechanics of analysis, which these video tutorials focus on, but also learn the intuition behind the analysis you're performing, I strongly suggest you check out the other intuition-focused videos on this channel where I take the jargon out of statistics and data science and help you build a deep, intuitive understanding behind all the analysis that you're performing. I'll put a link below to a playlist of the videos that focus on just this. Finally, please take a moment to like the video, subscribe to this channel, and click that little bell icon so that you don't miss out on any new content that I put out. Thanks for watching.